Hello everyone, Grade Sevens. I'm Helen and I'm with you today to learn more natural sciences. The focus of our lesson today is going to be investigating boiling point. So in our last lesson, we spoke about the physical property of certain materials known as boiling point. And I want to just remind you that when we talk about boiling, we talk about a physical process that is happening to a material. When it has had heat added to it and it reaches a particular temperature at which it starts to boil. And that temperature at which the liquid starts to boil and is going to change from a liquid to a gas, that is called our boiling point. And we measure boiling point, or any temperature for that matter, in degrees Celsius. And I told you that water has a boiling point of 100 degrees C. So let's play with some of these ideas and let's investigate how we could determine what the boiling point of water is. Now this is an investigation that you could do at home if you have a thermometer. But I want to caution you, your thermometer mustn't be one of the thermometers that you put in your mouth in order to work out your body temperature. Because those thermometers can only measure up to about 42 degrees. And if we're talking about water boiling at 100 degrees C, you're going to need a thermometer that is able to record much higher temperatures. So you can't do this investigation just with a normal body temperature thermometer. You would need what we call a cooking thermometer. So some of your parents or grannies that bake, they may have cooking thermometers and you can use their cooking thermometer. But I want you to promise me one thing, grade sevens. If you do this investigation at home, I want you to make sure that you've got an adult or a much older brother or sister helping you. Because you could so easily burn yourself and you're precious. I don't want you to get burned. That would be terrible. So you can do this investigation, but only if you promise me that you're going to do it with an adult and you're going to take great care not to get burnt. So what would you need to investigate the boiling point of water? Well, we would need a heat source. And the diagram that I'm showing you here shows a little gas burner or a little candle burner that might be present in a laboratory at school. But you can use the stove or you could use a gas burner at home. We need something like a little stand in order to put our pot or our beaker on. We're going to use, if we were in the laboratory, we would use a glass beaker, but you can use any pot that you like that your mom cooks with. And of course, we're going to use this special cooking thermometer that will be able to record temperatures in excess of 100 degrees C. And that means greater than 100 degrees C. So how would you do this investigation? Well, you would take your beaker or your pot and you're going to fill it up with water from the tap. You're going to put it onto your heat source and you're going to put the thermometer into that water. You're then going to turn on the heat source. And you're going to wait for a period of time until the water starts to move and to bubble. And all the time you can be recording the temperature of the water on the thermometer. I would also suggest that you use oven gloves or mitts in order to prevent yourself from burning. 
Now, what you would see is that if you turfed out that hot water and you started again with cold water, you would see that every time this water will boil at more or less the same temperature, around about 100 degrees. So we can record our information on a graph. And I want to spend some time with you today focusing on how we do this graph drawing. First of all, a graph is a drawing, so it must have a heading. But I'd like us to put the heading on at the end. On our x-axis, that is the horizontal axis, we're going to record time. And we're going to record it in units, minutes. And we're going to divide the axis into two minutes at that point, four minutes, six minutes, eight minutes, 10 minutes, etc. On our y axis or our vertical axis, we're going to record the temperature of the water. And we're going to record it in degrees C. So at the start of our investigation, we are going to have water at possibly, let's just say here, this is 20 degrees, 40 degrees, 60 degrees, 80 degrees, 100 degrees, over here, 110, or sorry, 120 degrees, and so on. At the start, our water was maybe 20 degrees coming out of the tap. After two minutes, we looked at our thermometer, and our thermometer registered about 40 degrees. After four minutes, it was up to 60 degrees. At six minutes, it had shot up to 90 degrees. And at somewhere between six and eight minutes, it reached 100 degrees. At 10 minutes, it was still 100 degrees. At 12 minutes, it was still 100 degrees. And if we plot our graph and then join the points, we're going to get a line that shows us the temperature of water as it is heated. And we would be able to plot boiling point at the point or the temperature at which boiling started and then the temperature didn't increase inside the water. You may know that the steam or the water vapor rising from your pot is hotter than 100 degrees and it can burn you very badly. We know that water has the boiling point of 100 degrees C. What about other substances? Do they have different boiling points? Well, you may want to experiment further, but only only with an adult. You could add some sugar to your water and make a sugar solution. And you would find that the sugar solution boiled at a slightly higher temperature than water. If you were boiling sunflower oil in order to make chips, for example, or to deep fry samosas, you're going to need to get that temperature of the oil to a much higher temperature. You're going to have to add more heat. And the temperature of boiling sunflower oil is about 230 degrees. It is, in fact, more than double the temperature of boiling water. And this is why working with boiling oil is so dangerous because if that boiling oil spatters out and it touches you, it's going to make immediate blisters and hurt you so badly. Glycerine 
is a substance often used in hand creams and hand lotions. Look at its boiling point. Nearly three times the boiling point of water. So, if we were now to add these boiling points to our graph, what would we see? Let's start drawing the graph together. What do we call the horizontal axis? This is our x-axis, and we're plotting time in minutes. Do you remember? And we divided it into 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and so on minutes. On our y-axis, which is the vertical axis, we were recording temperature, and the units were in degrees C. And this time I'm going to change the scale of the graph, and I'm going to say 50 degrees, 100 degrees, 150, 200, 250 degrees, 300 degrees. Now remember that we said that at around six minutes, just after six minutes, our water boil at 100 degrees. And we could then show this on the graph in that way. Right? The temperature increased to boiling point and then more or less stayed the same in the water. And because we're now going to show different substances on the same graph, we're going to label the lines that we draw. Let's start with the sugar solution. The sugar solution we're going to see takes a little bit longer to get to boiling point, but the boiling point is only a little bit higher than water. So we would see very much the same kind of graph happening for our sugar solution. Sunflower oil takes longer to get to boiling point because we need to add a lot more heat energy. And the sunflower oil we know boiled at about 232 degrees, which would be about there. So our sunflower oil has a boiling point around there, and we would see that's what our sunflower oil graph would look like. Glycerine has a boiling point of almost 300 degrees. And we know that it takes slightly longer to get there, so we would see glycerine's graph looking like that. This is now called a multiple line graph because we've got more than just the water graph, a single line on our graph. We've now got many lines of our graph, and we can't now call it the temperature of water over time or in time. We need to talk about different substances. So our heading would be the temperature of different substances. I'm just abbreviating it here so that it goes a bit quicker over, and we might say, 16 minutes. There's our heading for our graph. And of course, remember, I'm drawing it freehand. You would need to use a ruler and you need to make it look very beautiful. We need to understand that different materials have different boiling points. And that difference in the boiling point will allow the material to be used for different functions. So I want you to think about boiling point. I want you to think about temperature and heat and the difference between those two ideas. And when I see you again, we're going to look at the opposite of boiling. We're going to look at melting point. So until next time, grade sevens, I'm going to say goodbye.